Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. Beyond the visible, there are dimensions of God waiting to be explored. In interacting with the dimensions of God, Apostle Oromo Sai guides us through these divine realms. Discover how to connect with God's presence in profound and life-changing ways. Experience the depth of God's love and power through worship and prayer. Unlock the mysteries of God's dimensions and transform your spiritual journey, leading you into deeper interactions with the divine. It's a Jew, it's a real Jew. His father was a Jew, his mom was a Jew. He was supposed to be exempted from temple tax. Real Jews are not supposed to pay temple tax, but they saw him and they wanted to find occasion with him and they required that he should pay temple tax. The time that they asked for temple tax was a time of recession. And it was customary for people not to have money at that time. That was when they asked Jesus, can you pay? Instantly, Jesus told Peter, because Jesus was aware that Peter maintained the last fishing hook. He maintained it just in case ministry fails. <laughs> Jesus knew the hook was there, but he didn't make any comment until the, that day when they say it's time to pay them. He said, that hook that I am aware that you... <laughs> Can you reach out to it and go to the lake now? Throw it in. You are going to bring up a fish. Open the mouth, you'll find a, a golden coin. Pay for yourself. Pay for me also. There was no situation he found himself in that he was trapped the elements the pressures of this world could not trap him because he was leaning on an an all-sufficient dimension yes. so there are resources in the realm of the spirit that god has made available for us and is expecting that we'll take advantage of those resources in prosecuting natural life upon the face of the earth so I just showed you a situation where a man was confronted with an angel that came from another realm. But the angel is actually one of the angels processing his prayers in the heavens. I know you are not aware of the fact that sometimes when you intercede, there are angels of priesthood, and I can show you that from the book of Revelation. Your voice is not strong enough, so they add some spices to your prayer to make it more effective. I, I know you don't believe that is by biblical. I know you don't believe that. You you ah. I think we need to change this message. The angel called Lucifer. He was one of those angels that labored in the corridor of priesthood. When prayers come from earth, they are the ones that that manage incense before it is released into the sanctuary where God is. So Lucifer knows a lot about priesthood. You can see that from witches, from warlocks, how they manage altars that can influence the earth. It's because where he operated, the result of what we do on earth, they receive the feedback from that place. So he knows a lot about priesthood. Are you still with me? Yes. The moment your enemy takes warfare into the realm of the supernatural, you can no longer fight that warfare naturally. If what you brought to the table is your brute strength, you are already a loser because a person has taken it into another dimension. What you are supposed to do is to take it into your own dimension. And whether your dimension you know when we take battles into dimensions the outcome of these battles is not the strength your acquaintance with the dimension but the strength of the dimension that you are anchoring your faith upon 
So when Goliath came to contend with David, even though he was an established warrior from his youth, according to the testimony, he did not come against David with sword and shield. He took the battle to the supernatural and cast David by the name of his God. Are you there? Yes. So when David discovered that this battle, meanwhile, what did David bring for the battle in the natural? Brought, brought a sling. <laughs> mm. If Goliath had maintained the battle in the natural, he would have defeated David. But unfortunately, that's how he won all his battles. He takes it into the supernatural and then he fights from there. So David also took the battle into the supernatural and said, I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts, whose armies you have defiled. So it means that the realms had to clash. And the result of the clash was manifested in the natural. So much so that he took the foolishness of a sling to end the battle in the natural. It was no longer a function of who was stronger, who was more equipped. It was a function of which dimension is superior are you are you following so we are going gradually <laughs> okay in view of the above i want to assume that you're understanding me i will give you three definitions of spirit dimensions and when I succeed in doing that, I will take you to one dimension. One out of seven. You will study the remaining six yourself. This dimension I will show you in scripture. I will go there and demonstrate it. I will, I will touch base with that dimension. Then demonstrate how that dimension plays out in the natural. That's a practical aspect of the lecture. Now the reason why I'll be doing what I'll be doing is not to show you that I'm a powerful man. No. It's to illustrate the reality of a certain dimension. In the eyes of Jesus, we are supposed to prosecute natural life from supernatural dimensions. And that's why he said, these signs will follow them that believe. They should have the capacity to call forth reinforcement, virtue, capacity from the dimensions they are connected to. So they are expressed invitations in scripture for us to come boldly and interact and deal properly with the dimensions of God. Are you there? You spoke in tongues yesterday, you spoke in tongues today. But the utterance you spoke yesterday is not the same utterance you spoke today. Why? It is not a repetition. Why? Why is it different? You spoke from a different place. That's why it was different. was not on the same location in the realm of the spirit your spirit was interacting with something else and he was inspired to speak according to the interactions that he had sometimes you are praying about an issue and it takes you four months to find the answer is God deaf why did it take four months the answers that you seek are in a certain dimension your prayers are vehicles through which you, you you transit from one location to another location and there are dealings that you will experience as you are traveling and god is more interested in the dealings you receive through your prayers than the answers that you're asking for. oh my god answers are good 
but he gives us dealings so that we can qualify to interact deeper in the dimensions where the answers to the things we seek are domiciled. The average believer is a lightweight because we do not know the reality of the things we read in the Bible. The Bible came from that dimension for your, for your information. The Bible was inspired, was inspired by the Holy Ghost. Is that true? It is descriptive of actual realities that are obtainable in the realm of God. If you enter into these dimensions and begin to interact with them, one of the reasons why you will know that you are interacting with the accurate dimension of light is that the, you will find that the scriptures testify about those things. In the realm of the spirit, the scriptures are manifested. Do you understand what I'm saying? The things you read about in scripture, you will see their reality. That's what I mean. So the Holy Spirit inspired people to write about these realities. So if you begin to have experiences that are not captured in the Bible, it means that your experiences are not healthy. Because there's no witness of them in Scripture. The Scriptures were written from experiential perspective. So that when you begin to have the same experiences, you'll be able to relate with the Scriptures that testify about them. Are you saying with me? Yeah. Right, so we'll give you three definitions because a dimension is deep. Um, we cannot define it with one definition. We need like two, three definitions in order for us to understand what a dimension is. Number one. Spirit dimensions are spiritual realities and realms spirit dimensions are spiritual realities and realms in heaven that God allows your spirit man to come in contact with when you yield to the Holy Ghost spirit dimensions are spiritual realities and realms in heaven that God allows your spirit man to come in contact with when you yield to the Holy Ghost are you there okay let's find some scriptures to justify that definition all right so can we do can we do um i think the easiest one for us will be first corinthians chapter two first corinthians chapter two and i brethren when I came to you, came not with the excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man but in the power of god so we have a compendium of four deliberate decisions that apostle paul made in his ministry these decisions were deliberate right but that's not my emphasis so i will not show you the decision but in verse 1 to verse 5 there are four decisions there that's the content four decisions that he made deliberately in his ministry are you there okay see the way i'm seeing your face you want me to talk about it but it will take it will, it will take 15 minutes that's the problem he said my speech 
my preaching was not with the enticing words of man's wisdom. That's the first decision. Paul was well read. He was learned. Paul was a good communicator. At least you can see that in his writings. Very good communicator. But he decided that his presentation of the gospel will not be based on enticing words that's one it will not be based on man's wisdom that's two but it will be based on the demonstration of the spirit and the demonstration of power so there are two things the demonstration of the spirit is different from the demonstration of power and he made his ministry a ministry that was rich in the demonstration of the spirit a ministry that was rich in the demonstration of power and the reason why he came about these deliberate decisions was because of his audience he did not want the fate of his audience to be anchored upon the wisdom of man but to be anchored upon what a power of God and this was a decision he made this was not how he was taught in Bible school he himself came up with this decision because he wanted the welfare of his people his emphasis was that the people he preached to will not end up considering him a great preacher was that his goal he had the resources in terms of lingo and knowledge to earn the applaud from the people but he decided that he would not take that approach his approach was designed to ensure that every member of the church he pastored had a working relationship with god because his method was designed to ensure that their faith was anchored on what on the power of so that's the first aspect so embedded in that were four deliberate decisions he took so if you go home look for them and if you want your ministry to be like that of apostle paul you might be advised to adopt his decisions Are you following? but that's not where i'm going that's just a passage it's a habit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect yet not the wisdom of this world not the princes of this world that come to naught but we speak the wisdom of god in the mystery even the hidden wisdom which god ordained before the world unto our glory which none of the princes of this world knew for had they known it they would not have crucified the lord of glory now the second thing about his ministry is that it is rooted in a dimension that is higher than the dimension of darkness there is a wisdom that that man stumbled upon and that wisdom was higher than the wisdom that the princes of this age operate for if we want to defeat witchcraft it's not by noise we need to go into realms higher than the realms that witchcraft operates from the african church cannot tell a story of victory if we don't have an antidote to witchcraft the revival that god is bringing on the continent is a revival that will give us access to the realms of god so that we can handle the invincible realms and reveal the majesty that is connected to them he said we speak wisdom in a mystery it's a hidden wisdom we're able to we're able to connect it we're able to stumble upon it and none of the princes of this age has access to that belly of wisdom so naturally we are going to perform better than the wizard because we have our roots 
in a dimension of wisdom that the princes of this world do not, do not know. Then he gave an example. If it is true, the princes of this world have access to the dimension of wisdom that I speak, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory because it was wisdom that was at work. Now, this is what Jesus said. He said, Now is the judgment of this world. Now the prince of this world is cast out. And if that's condition. That's if I be lifted up, that's condition. Huh? It means Jesus was not supposed to be the one to lift himself up. Someone will have to lift him up. Someone will have to crucify him. If he kills himself, it will not it will not it will not translate to our redemption. So someone needs to. And then the Bible now revealed that it was Satan and his princes that actually carried out the unsetting part of that decree. The if was fulfilled by Satan. The reason why Satan was motivated to fulfill it was because he did not have access to the wisdom that was at work. It means there is a dimension of wisdom we can operate in. People that claim that they are attacking us are pushing us deeper into our destiny. Yeah. Say none of the princes of this world. For had they known it, they would not have crucified what? The Lord of God. Now, this is where I want to take you. As we go into these other aspects of the reading, A word is introduced that I would like you to take note of. And the word here, the word is what? Things. Please take note of things as we read from this point. He said, How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to not? But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which none. With, with God ordained before the world unto our glory. Wait, 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 wait. This hidden wisdom, God ordained our glory in the manifestation of this wisdom. Now listen to me carefully. Listen carefully. Satan is a created being. Lucifer was created. God did not create Satan. God created Lucifer. Lucifer became Satan. Just like God created man. And then man fair it was not god that was responsible for his fall do you understand that yes. so lucifer became satan he fell from that rank and he became satan now there are secrets that god put in place god knew that lucifer will fall all the three the three archangels that you know the first is michael Are you there? Yes. Michael. Okay. Do you realize that God's name is in Michael? Mike El Elohim. Michael of El, El Elyon. So Michael is in charge of defense. Michael means strength. That strength of God, not just strength, strength of God. Now, then the other one is Gabriel. You heard him. Gabriel said, I stand in the presence of God. So he's an archangel. The ones that stand in the presence of God, the ones that minister to God and minister around God, those are the archangels. In Gabriel's name, you will see El Elyon there. Gabriel. He did not. He did not ensure Lucifer. His name. Oh, you are not following. Me. You are not. You are not following. Me. It knew, <laughs> there was no insurance on that name. Lucifer. Lucifer the light bearer that's the meaning there was no L there so he knew he was going to fall he did not give him his name now now he said are you there yes. there were hidden mysteries secrets that God encoded he hid those secrets away even before creation began because he knew that there will be an angelic rogue a rogue was coming so he hid some secrets in his archive before creation started he said the reason why he hid them 
was not that he was hiding something from you but hiding something for you and the reason why he hid them is because it is ordained for your exaltation your advantage we want to be stronger than witches i'm showing you that there is a dimension that carries the dimension of glory that is needed to discomfit satan i mean discomfiting the way elijah defeated the prophets of baal in the open so before creation began god held some secrets so these secrets the princes of this world as vast as they are as experienced as they are they do not have access to the secrets it is because of their inability to access these secrets that the bible is full of the miscalculations of the devil now can you look at your life how many of you have ever had accidents here motor accidents Pastor Ben, you are okay. Uh, my hand is up because I'm, I, I'm also. Ah, uh, yeah, well, we've been there. We've been there. Now, now, do you think that the devil just wanted to scratch your car? That was the idea. All those resources were deployed just to scratch something. It had deeper intentions that was not actualized because he did not have access to enough secrets. enough secrets god deliberately made him handicapped by concealing some secrets and domiciling them in the realm of wisdom are you there next verse which none of the princes of this world knew it for had they known him they would not have crucified the lord of glory yes next verse but as it is written i has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God is prepared, had prepared for them that love him. Stop there. We are aware of the fact that God loves us, loves the world, he gave his son. But we are not sure if you love God. We are not sure of that. And these things that eyes have not seen, these things that ears have not heard these things that have not entered into the heart of man meanwhile what are those things something that eyes have not seen that ears have not heard not entered into the heart of man that's what the bible calls mystery it is beyond your comprehension but such things exist but he prepared them not for those that god loves but for those that love god Is it true that you love God? If we see the way you spend money, we'll know if you love God. If there's a need in the house of God, that's when we'll know if you love God. We that preach the gospel, we empty our purses to meet the needs. It's when we cannot meet it ourselves that we we'll make it public. You never know what we do. And you will never know but when god who knows all sees our efforts he can tell this one loves me that one loves me based on the sacrifices that we are willing to expose ourselves to so that the kingdom of god on the earth can advance we can tell who loves god and he happens to be that this secret wisdom is only kept for those that love him unfortunately so if you discover that there you can't enter into some things first of all check your love life you may have become like the efficient church that has lost her first love Can we go please take note take note next verse then but god has revealed them to us by his spirit for the spirit searches all things so i say you should count things he searches all what 
that is number one here the deep oh you are not with me <laughs> since you are not with me we will stop at number one this number one that i'm trying to define we'll stop there when you labor in the wilderness for another one year when i come back <laughs> you'll be ready to those witches that are tormenting you when they torment you another one year again when we come for bible study you say oh mm, you will you will want to get it you have not labored enough yet so we will leave don't worry okay. ah. are you there yes. you know i said that a, a dimension According to my definition, first definition, a dimension is a spirit reality. A dimension is a spirit realm in heaven, which God allows our spirit man to come in contact with because we yield in the Holy Ghost. Now, we yield to the Holy Ghost, but God has revealed them to us by His Spirit. This thing, that wisdom, that insight, that understanding is not in this realm. It's in another realm. There's nothing physical you can do to stumble on this wisdom. But the Bible says, the Spirit of God is the revealer of the things in that dimension. And the reason why the Spirit of God has capacity to reveal things is because the Spirit of God can search all things. The Spirit of God can search into the deep things of God. That's how we get our messages that we preach. The one I'm preaching today. That's how I got it. I was since you, when you left, I started speaking in tongues. Because when I speak in tongues for two hours, the search engine of the Holy Ghost starts. It's deeper than Google. <laughs> is searching searching for the present revelation position of the spirit that's how we preach things that are always relevant because we subject it to searching when he has finished searching he brings the search results out that's what we preach we our preaching is timely the words we preach is not just knowledge we are given it's a knowledge that is an emphasis in the spirit it is searched out are you there searched out it is fresh it's not as if we went to hear somebody and then we got a sermon then we now began to change it to them that is very good it's good for scholars and researchers that's a level that's a level because there are some insights you can get by research even jesus himself said flesh and blood did not reveal this to you that means there are others that you can access by flesh and blood by research but what i'm talking about is beyond research it's things that cannot be taught things that you cannot even learn they are handed out by the holy ghost the way they are in the realm where they exist now so we can deduce a few things from here first thing we can deduce from this scripture is that the holy ghost is the one that exercises guardianship over the realm of god and what i mean by that is if you are going to access the realm of god it will be the holy ghost that will give you revelation of that realm you cannot know god because you desire to know god you only know god because the holy spirit is willing to reveal him so none of us knows how to know god uh, just like you know how to pray but you don't know how to answer prayer <laughs> if you enter into that space it's because the spirit of god gave you access now i want to transit because uh, two more minutes and then i'll finish my theory then we'll move to practical
redo you know just let it be faint don't raise it too high I want to transit I want to move from the office of a teacher because I'm noticing that you're not following so I want to move so the Spirit of God exercises guardianship over the realm of God is the one that will introduce you to the realm open the realm to you is the one that will make your spirit touch some realities sometimes how many of you experience this when you pray then you begin to feel as if something is moving and that's a baptism your spirit has touched a reality it's a new framework of possibility you are not used to it so it gives you signs that what you are dealing with is a new commodity the spirit of god because the duty of the spirit of god is to give you the capacity to interact with the realm where god is jesus will always say that i cannot do anything of myself it is what i see the father do so how does jesus see the father who is in heaven the spirit he has to yield to the spirit this is the reason why the first school and the first dimension i must teach you about is the realm of intimacy there's a realm of intercourse in god oh man i don't know how to explain it but that realm of intimacy is what the preacher attempted to explain in the book of songs of solomon according to the preacher there are nine levels of intimacy and the last level of intimacy is when a pursuer of god is willing to be released to the altar of sacrifice that's where isaac got to when abraham wanted to sacrifice him in terms of physical strength isaac will win abraham in a judo contest because he because in judo the objective is for you to put the persons back on the ground isaac will achieve that will put abraham's back on the ground and tie his neck but there was something that he was exposed to there was a knowledge that he had that made him submit i know you are aware of the fact that the objective of the flesh is to ensure that the spirit doesn't gain mastery over you are you there oh you are not there so when satan could not stop you from giving your life to christ the first thing he will do and he will achieve that through the flesh is to ensure that he has a front in your members through which he will contest the authority of the holy ghost every single time because the flesh lost it after the spirit and the spirit after the flesh so there's a conflict that will arise in your vessel perpetually so if the spirit of god is going to have his way it means you must find a technology through which the flesh is brought into captivity so that you can yield without resistance to the holy ghost in order for him to accomplish the wisdom of god in your life Either. i don't have time to go to the book of songs of solomon i will show you the what what we mean when we say the pursuit of god pursuing intimacy with god now this scripture brings us to a deep matter a matter of friendship with the holy ghost because 
if you do not know the language by which the Holy Spirit communicates you cannot respond to him and unfortunately for you and me he doesn't speak Luganda <laughs> the Holy Ghost does not speak Luganda doesn't speak what again doesn't speak Swahili doesn't speak English language so let me take you on a journey quickly because of this scripture and show you the realm of intimacy there is a realm called the realm of intimacy are you there Ephesians, I've had this inside. Have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. In your precious name, Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.